Good morning. It's Carol, welcoming you back to my studio. My husband and I have been gone for almost a week up to the mountains in North Carolina to peep at the leaves. And they were very lovely, but not quite as red and orange as they had been in previous visits. I guess because the weather uh, was so warm, it did not yet get cold enough to bring out those vivid reds and oranges, but nevertheless, it was just delightful. And while I was there, I was taking advantage, as you can see, of some of the things that I find up there that you just don't seem to be lucky enough to put my hands on locally. My husband was uh, enjoying a uh, model airplane contest and absolutely the happiest boy on earth playing with his toys so Carol played with hers a little bit also. One of the things that I was able to get in our first stop was in Huntersville is that I went to Donna Downey's studio and oh my goodness what a bit of heaven that place is. There was of course uh, there was a class going on there and the joy and the art that was in that room was unbelievable. The work that was being produced on canvas, some of the ladies actually had never painted before. I wish you could have seen the artwork that I was able to look at. And while I was there I shopped a bit in her store area and I ran into something wonderful. If you have been watching my videos, you have seen me use this Princeton Neptune number no. four, which I purchased, oh, I would say um, almost a year ago, because I wanted a large mop brush that would hold water and yet also produce a point like this. And I have been using it and enjoying it. But this puppy was rather expensive. I think it was, I don't know, maybe between 30 and $35. So I also felt then, as I do now, that sometimes it's best to be able to see and touch rather than order uh, through either Amazon or Dick Blick or so forth. Donna had a jar full of the same brushes in different sizes. So I treated myself to a number four and a number ten. And now I think that I have a nice selection of these better quality brushes which I have been enjoying using and I cannot wait to get started on these. So that was my visit to Huntersville to Don and Downey's while my husband was off to partaking in his contest. From Huntersville, we went two hours up the mountain to Asheville, and that place I highly recommend. It is just a little bit of heaven on earth. When we arrived there, one of the places that I like to go to, which I call Mecca, is probably the biggest, best AC Moore store on, in North America. It was just lovely. And while I was there, walking the aisles, I glimpsed this value pack, 39 designs, and I looked at these little pictures here and I said to myself, self, hmm, oh my, it's a little bit expensive, but the asking price was $19.99 and I had a 50% coupon, well, immediately. That, that put a different complexion on these. And I thought I'd open this with you for the first time and see what actually came in this rather lovely packing. When I look at stencils, I usually look at them for potential for using parts of a stencil. I like these leaves. These are very pretty 
flowers for a background, but these leaves tickled me. And, oh my, red paper. And here we have uh, this one. I think I'll just bring this up close so that you can get a look and see which one I'm looking at now. This one and that there, again, I see that as the whole piece, but I also see it as the parts. And as you notice, it's a rather, it is a rather large stencil because they are on pieces of 12 by 12 heavy paper. Now I'm not afraid to use uh, paper for stencils because I've been doing it and the more acrylic that you add on top of this paper, the stronger the paper becomes. The next one is the rose, which of course, being a rose girl, made me very happy. The next one is a grouping of leaves, and I, of course, see that as that section, and that section, and maybe even the butterfly if pushed. A nice background leaf pattern, and now that I'm looking at them rather closely, I, oh, I think maybe, can you see that? I hope so. Uh, there is some detailing in here. So that was a good, that was a good one. I thought it was just shapes. A rather generic flower pattern, but pretty. More of these background flowers. Only bigger and better this time. more background stenciling. Here, a wild rose and surrounded by leaves. And there again, I'm looking at those leaves for how they can be used for my projects. Large butterflies. A humongous flower. I'll hold this up for you so that you can get an idea of just how big this is. Here's my hand on this, and you can see that this is quite a nice chrysanthemum flower size. Here I come, let's come back. Here are some individual, individual roses. Different, but similar leaves to the first leaf want design, but larger. Oh my goodness. A few designs of flower pots. A watering can. A rather generic flower pattern. And a spray of leaves and beautiful flowers. I do wish I had known this and I would have tried to have gotten these uh, bits pushed out for you, but let me get a little bit closer on this so that you can see. Come on camera. There it is. So that you can see that these flowers are quite nice. Another chrysanthemum. More butterflies. Another flower. So here we have chrysanthemum. Butterflies. Oh my goodness. This flower looks small in the illustration here. But there again, it's filling up most of the page. And goodness, don't I love a large, a large stencil. These puppies fill up a quarter of this 12 by 12 sheet. Each one is a quarter of this sheet. Oh, here's a potentially lovely one with the stems and leaves attached.
fine, fine leaves, and these are kind of a pill if you want to draw them yourself. So, here they are in two sizes on this stencil. What a lovely background that would make. More flowers. Buds and a leaf. More flowers, uh, more leaves. And these two generics on the end. All told, I'm sure you will agree that 39 stencils for $10 was quite a lucky buy. Do try your AC more if you have one close to you. And I hope that you do because those are going to get a lot of mileage. I'll set those aside. And also at AC more, they were having a little sale of Princeton's and I got myself some rounds, a zero and a two zero. Fine, fine pointed brushes for watercolor. And I do enjoy the quality of the Princeton brushes. So at a dollar ninety nine I treated myself to these two. Well, that was my Carol Toys. Here is the project that I took with me uh, for my art during some downtime. And I don't believe I've showed this before, but this is a dollar store notebook. And I very carefully and since I found, I looked inside and I realized that it was sewn, so I very carefully cut each of the pieces of thread that bound the uh, lined pages to the cover. And there I'm now left with the lined pages and, I was, and I'm left with this cover, which as you can see, I decorated front and back. I covered this spine from the book itself with masking tape. And I've been kind of holding this one aside since June 16 for I don't know what. I knew I would find its reason, and I did. I removed the pages, and I made some signatures. I made four signatures, and I decided I'm not going to bother with sewing. I've seen uh, success from master teachers like Shannon Green and others that have used rubber bands to great success and I decided that I would try it and I'm quite tickled. So I have four signatures and each signature has, a, and I use gesso on the inside covers, don't know what's going to happen to them yet, but the first signature and all of them have a piece of uh, color book paper some of the what, the notebook paper, two sheets glued together, more, another piece of color book, some pieces, uh, at least one piece in each signature of a nicer quality watercolor paper. And as you can see, this was my first uh, practice, and this is kind of my my personal playbook. This is the my go-to journal for. Well, let's say when I just need some downtime for art, when I need to relax and lay back, this is my go-to. These are some practice pieces of uh, drawing that I want to do and want to do more of. First I did pencil and then I did I went over that lightly with a very fine tipped uh, uniball signal. A signal, I think I used an ultra micro pen to get these fine lines. Let me show it to you. Alrighty, this is my 
Uniball Signal, Ultra Micro, very, 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 very fine tipped gel pen. This, of course, was found in Walmart. I love those pens. And I used a page of drawing paper for drawing. I used some multimedia paper in each signature. And the second signature starts out the same way. Has a piece of multimedia paper and a piece of watercolor paper. And this was one of the, this was the first piece that I did when I was on vacation and had a little bit of downtime. I worked on this one. And on this one, but before I did that, when I first arrived back in the room and wanted to, uh, and my husband was off do, uh, doing an errand, I got out my uh, Jane Davenport brights and I put a little bit of watercolor on some of these pages so that I would have a little background and I let them dry. And then, therefore, I was able to come back to these pages and do the uh, pen drawing uh, over the watercolor. This did not involve pencil. I worked very hard and talked to myself very seriously about not using pencil first. So this was another piece that I accomplished. Here is a piece of watercolor paper with some paint waiting to be doodled on. The third signature. More background waiting. This was a, another piece I did in the evening with one eye on the television and one eye on the clock because um, when you're in, from Jacksonville, when you go up to the mountains and the uh, fresh air and the uh, walking does catch up long around 10 o'clock. So this was another job that I worked on up there. And as you can see, this is a rather personal for me that I thought I would share. I'm going to be playing in this and genuinely enjoying my freedom, experimenting in this little journal and the glories of a dollar store notebook. And when you pick out those threads and remove the paper, you have the nicest, firmest cover, which works very well. On another day in Asheville, we went to Black Mountain to the same antique mall in which I found my antique ledger and actually I found two of them one of which was on my Etsy shop and has already been sold and I hope that the purchaser is enjoying it tremendously and I thought well actually it was my husband's suggestion why don't we go back maybe you'll find something and here are the something some things that I found a veritable treasure trove this little booklet was lying on the shelf and I looked at it from across the the booth and zeroed in on it. I think I zeroed in on the ribbon first and then I zeroed in somehow or another I was able to see that flocking. But as my husband says, I would probably be able to see an ant in a mall if I was looking for something. And I saw this little puppy and I noticed that the beautiful condition of this flocked fabric cover and the ribbon closures and the nice grommet and then the inside of this book silver paper silvery ribbon silver in the flocking and I said okay now let's hope and I had my fingers and toes crossed 
and I went further into the book, and as I held it up, I noticed that the pages are silvered, the edges of the pages are silvered, and it is completely empty. It has lovely quality, thin, but lovely quality paper in it, and it is pristine. Well, there again, I almost did myself an injury, tucking this under my arm, and this will be showing up on my Etsy shop quite soon, because I believe this is something that I just need to share, and I know that it will be an enjoyable journal for anyone interested. So that was my first purchase. And I said, my, 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 wasn't this worth the visit? The next book that I found was this Flower Power book. And the first thing I really saw was the size of this illustration. And many of you who watch my YouTube channel ask me where I find large size pieces of collage. Here is a large piece of collage. So, this book, the, co the covering is in very nice condition. The book is in nice condition. It was um, published in 2002. Excuse me, I must wet my whistle. Now, when I make a decision about whether or not I'm going to buy a book like this, which is a few dollars more than I usually spend because I like to find books like this for five dollars, well, it doesn't always happen. But if when I leaf through it, I find this many possibilities, that tips me over to positive thinking. The very first example that I found was this one. Look at those poppies. Aren't they lovely? Here, the table of contents. And isn't this combination of this blue and this yellow green just a beautiful and eye catcher? Now, whether or not you would you make this into an altered book or just use this for collage, you can see the possibilities right there in this section. And as I said, I'm always looking for a book like this for either possibility as to whether or not I'm going to purchase it. In the beginning of this book, there are a few uh, veggies included. This one particularly tickled me. Those are the prettiest radishes and just so yelling spring. But note the size of the uh, illustration. The photo is quite large. More of that lovely green and purple. Isn't this just delightful? And here would be a prime example of the possibility for reverse collage. You might very well just wish the uh, metal tub that these flowers are found in. And if you wish to Get rid of the background, you would just do some reverse collage painting here. You could cut this out and use just this area. So many potential ideas for that page. Ranunculus. Aren't these lovely? And oh my. Tulips. A double spread and careful cutting right down in here allows for this spread to be used 
on another sheet of paper, collage to another sheet of paper, or of course, as another example of reverse collage. Well, this was one of the pages that absolutely bought this book. This is in a wooden box and has some absolutely lovely, lovely flowers. I do believe I had painted these into my in my uh, antique ledger. And the name of those has gone right out of my mind right now because I'm just feasting on the eye candy. But isn't that a lovely, large flower collage? And look at this one. Just look at that one. Wouldn't that be just delightful as part of a holiday, uh, Christmas, possibly, Christmas piece because of those colors and look at that blast of violet against that red and you'll notice the brown shades of brown background with a very light lilac as an offsetting color so here we again we have a collage possibility or a reverse uh, a reverse uh, cutout collage possibility or a reverse collage This, however, I definitely wanted to share with you because this just screams reverse collage because if you painted out all of the bits here that you didn't want, you would be ending up with these packages of roses that are just absolutely beautiful. Whoa, I don't know. Nope, they're not roses. Sorry. Closer look. These are tulips. These are small tulips. But, picturing this this way. Oh, the possibilities. A bouquet. And this one is the one that tempts me not to share this on YouTube, uh, I'm sorry, on Etsy, but I'm going to, because this one is what made me say, okay, I have to have this book. Isn't this just an absolutely lovely layout? The possibilities here are endless. This was the deciding factor for purchasing this book. This, I noticed, and this is something that I also look at when I'm thinking about the possibilities, this flower section in this lovely vase is, ends before the split in the page, so this can be fussy cut around this picture, and one would have a lovely, lovely piece of collage here also. What a beautiful old vase, iris, lilacs. I think these might be, I'm not sure, but they almost look to me to be a form. Well, I won't say that because they might, I don't think they're hydrangeas, but isn't that just delightful? This book will be coming to my Etsy shop soonest. So this was number one goodie. This was number two goodie. And then I found these. And I do believe that I almost hyperventilated. These are German gift wraps. I don't know whether you've seen many of these. These are from the This is 1991, and they're in perfect condition, including that front cover, 
end. These pages are over 18. Oh, I didn't exactly measure, but they are about 18 by 27 plus each. And there are two sheets. So since these are roses, I will be sharing on Etsy a sheet of each of these. I will keep one and I will share one. And aren't these just absolutely splendid? I was beside myself when I realized that someone did not appreciate this enough or didn't like roses or care enough about this to uh, use any of it. It's These are perfect. Here's the cover. I love that black and white background. And here's one that I really stopped and looked at because I really had to study to see what, what, what it was about this that was rather unique. And I think it was the use of these very laid back background designs and the negative, the negative this, uh, pa drawing paintings in here are just really, really showstoppers. And look at this one. Each of these are just, just delightful. So I will be sharing the pages from this book and here again, another one, English floral patterns. Now these are not doubles, so I definitely will be sharing half of the bounty here. And I took the time before I started this video to remove one sheet of paper so that you can see what you will be receiving in both of these. There it is. Isn't that a source of artistic muse? Oh my lord, my muse would be going crazy when she saw this. Isn't that something? And as I said about 18 by 18 plus by 27 plus. So we have that one. And that one. And look at that interesting combination. Dark, almost army green and lilac in the background. Some of the color combinations on these are really really something. This is almost a dark, I think this is a dark plum background for this one. And look at this. Mm -mm -mm. Aren't these just something? So, as you can see, oh my goodness, looking at each one of these sections, well, you know what it's like. This is eye candy. I can, s hoping that you see why I was so tickled that I went back to this treasure trove to find these items for sharing on Etsy, and why I enjoyed my visit, including a trip to, an a another trip, probably maybe our fifth or so, to Biltmore Estates, and having these goodies to bring home to share with you. I do hope that you have enjoyed hearing me ramble on. If you have enjoyed, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and I do try to answer as many as I can. Share with a friend. 
I would appreciate you subscribing to my channel and visiting my Etsy shop. The information is down below. These will be coming up soon. And now that I'm back home, I'm going to be getting back to work probably this afternoon in Monavana. And I will be seeing you soon. Bye now.